It's safe to say that Nvidia's Pascal range of graphics cards have done rather well for themselves as they have built and refined the much loved Maxwell architecture as well as of course optimising it for high clock speeds and improving the efficacy of the silicone. Now, Pascal was, of course, built on a 16nm FinFET process, with, of course, AMD on the other side of the fence firmly embracing 14nm for both Polaris, Vega, and future CPUs. NVIDIA have jumped into bed with Samsung, and Samsung are going to be able to offer NVIDIA a 14nm FinFET Pascal refresh, which in theory should be very similar to what NVIDIA have done in the past with the GTX 700 series, which of course was based on the Kepler architecture. So what does a Pascal refresh actually mean? And for the sake of convenience, let's assume that it will be named the GTX 11 series. Of course, it might not be, but, you know, rather than me saying that done, that there Pascal refresh, let's just call it GTX 11. Well, to put it in simple terms, higher clock speeds. Given that a lot of AIBs were able to squeeze 2 gigahertz out of the core alone, it's not too much of a stretch to say, on assumptions, that a Samsung-powered 14nm Pascal refresh will allow the GTX 11 series to hit speeds of 2 gigahertz plus as the standard. Now, the poorer yields of the 16nm process that Nvidia has, has been using, combined with the higher costs of Micron's GDDR5X memory, which is being used for the 1080, the Titan X Pascal has been a bit of a problem. So, therefore, we could see GDDR5X memory start trickling down the line of cards, and there are some rumours that point to 1080 Ti, which will actually be using vanilla standard GDDR5. Now, the thinking behind the decision to refresh the Pascal is probably to do with Vega 10, Vega 11, and of course the upcoming entries beyond that in AMD's new Radeon lineup. Now just in case you've somehow missed it in the various discussions here on this channel and elsewhere, or simply need a bit of a refresher, blow the cobwebs away, rumours have it that AMD's Vega is going to be quite a bit more than a simple Polaris with extra, comp extra compute units. Instead, AMD are radically improving performance, power consumption, and efficiency of the silicone. So, we're going to be seeing Vega 10 launch with HBM2, rumours are saying, in configs up to 16GB of HBM2. AMD are also planning to replace the Polaris 10 and 11, so the 470, 480, and the RX 460, with Vega 11. Doesn't stop there for AMD, obviously, they're also planning to launch dual card parts and eventually Navi in either 2018 or 2019. Now, given the release window of Vega of all the cards, it's a fairly safe assumption that the Vega 10 high-end parts won't be capable with just trading blows with the 1070 and 1080, but even possibly beating it outright. So, of course... Nvidia being forced to sit on the sidelines and lose market share to AMD without being able to counter it is just not something that Nvidia are going to allow to happen. And then of course the problem kind of expands from there given that Vega 10 will be seeing release in 20, the first quarter of 2017 and Vega 11 likely to hit a little later. So with the 14nm Pascal refresh, Nvidia can build on the architecture of the cars by cranking clock speeds, bandwidth and adjusting a few other things inside the silicone to get most out of the performance to be more competitive with AMD. Now one thing that Nvidia needs to do is allow AOBs to better improve the overclocking of Pascal, as doing that on the current Pascal cards is a little bit dicey because the board's power limit and GPU boost makes overclocking manually a lot less fun and easier to squeeze a bit more juice out of the cards, so if Nvidia would allow AIB to do a better job at this, we can start seeing some really nice overclocking for people willing to hammer enough voltage into the GTX 11 series cores. And finally, the last thing on our platter of goodness today is Volta, which of course has been pushed back several times now. Originally, it was going to be coming out in 2017, but of course, that's not the case. So, you know, if we can assume, again, lots of assuming going on this video, a 2018 launch, we could see HBM3 support. But other rumours tell us we'll certainly see NVIDIA adopting GDDR6 for Volta. So, let's put that in perspective. 
GDDR5X found in the GTX 10 and Pascal Refresh GTX 11 gives about 10 gigabytes a second of memory bandwidth, whereas GDDR6 is touted to hit a pretty damn impressive 16 gigabytes a second. So basically, the question remains: Well, if you're you know if you're just about to buy a GTX series card, should you wait? And to be honest, the answer is it depends, as of course we just don't know when the Pascal refresh is actually going to come out. Now if you already have a pretty good GPU setup, I'd personally wait, especially if you're planning on a Zen build next year. But you know, if you're currently gaming on a 660 because your old card you know, set fire, then obviously it's a bit of a different situation. It's probably more worthwhile to upgrade. Now obviously, none of this means that your 1070 or 1080 is suddenly going to become obsolete or pointless or super old. It, instead, it's a refinement of clocks and possibly a little tweaking. So, in theory, you're probably only going to be losing about 10 to 25 percent performance for the same price bracket. So, again, a lot of this is up in the air, up for grabs, all that good stuff. But it's looking pretty damn interesting nonetheless. And all of this thanks to a well-known Baidu user slash leaker called USG Ishimura. So there you go. A lot of this probably holds a lot of water for, because of that, but. With all that said, now we can move on to our second topic in this video. And it is regarding the GTX 1080 tie as we've had another specs leak for this particular card. Now if you've had experience with the other tie cards, for example like the 780 tie or the 980 tie, you would likely guess that the 1080 tie will be very close to that of the Titan card but of course without that eye-watering price point. In the case of the Pascal 1080 Ti, however, it will feature a further cutback version of the full GP102 GPU, meaning 26 of 30 SMs are left inv uh, available. For example, Titan X already has only 28 SMs total available, so the final figures would be about 3,328 CUDA cores, and we can safely presume about 208 TMUs. But the fewer CUDA cores actually has a benefit, clock spe speeds and yields. For a quick reference, the full GP102 core is capable of supporting 30 SMs with 128 cores each, and each SM contains 8 TMUs. So, if we did a bit of mathematics, 26 times 128, we're given the 3,328 figure for the 1080 tie. Now, of course, there's no word on the number of ROPs, but it is possible we could see the full 96, but of course, we will need to wait for confirmation on that. Now, one of the things that may have disappointed you about the Titan X Pascal was the clock speeds, which ran at just 1417 and 1530 MHz for standard and boost, respectively. Now, for the tie, this has been given a bit of a kick, and we're going to be seeing boost clocks of 16 and 23 MHz or more, which should put the card much closer in core speeds to the GTX 1080. And thanks to the extra speed the cores are running at, the 1080 Ti should make up for the fewer cores of the Titan X Pascal. Now those 3000 odd core, CUDA cores that I keep mentioning are still going to be paired with the same memory config that we saw in Titan X. So that means of course 12 gigs of GDDR5X memory and a rather nice 448 gigabytes a second memory bandwidth. So in theory, in memory restrictive scenarios, the two cards should performance wise be pretty much identical. Now, of course it goes without saying that the 12 gig GDDR5X memory config also ensures the same bus width as the Titan X, so we of course will be seeing a 384 bit memory bus. There's more yet, however, as the Titan, uh, sorry, the 1080 Ti rather, has features over the Titan again, and that is AIB flexibility. You might know that NVIDIA are kind of notorious for being a bit stringent on cooler clocks and configuration the Titan range of GPUs with vendors for other GeForce cards are afforded a bit more flexibility. As we've seen from other people such as say MSI, Gigaboot, Gigabyte rather, or ASUS, companies are quite happy to release hand-picked silicone parts and couple them with high-end coolers to get every bit of juice out of the core and of course the RAM. So. It's certainly not out of the realm of possibility that we'll see the 1080 Ti beating the Titan X Pascal in some, if not all, benchmarks if we're talking custom cards. 
Now, according to the leak, which originates from Chinese reports, we should see the 1080 Ti launch in January of next year, which does mean a debut with CES, which does make sense. Now, it is fairly probable, given the pricing scheme for NVIDIA's other cards in the Pascal range, that we will see the Ti launch between the high $700 to low $800 range for the Founders Edition, and possible price cuts to the standard 1080 as well, if we're doing well. So, if this is actually true, this does mean that the Titan X Pascal has essentially become a pointless purchase unless you've got a big stack of money that you just don't want to see anymore. To finish up, however, in terms of raw T-flops, the two cards should again be pretty much identical, assuming the boost clocks hit as advertised. You'll be looking at 11 T-flops versus 10.8 T-flops between the, 1080, uh, sorry, the Titan X and 1080 Ti respectively. And considering both of them are also one running on a 250 watt TDP, it's fairly obvious NVIDIA are hoping to get the high-end users who want 4K but just aren't willing to pay the Titan X's price point, and to be honest, who could really blame them? So if perhaps you're waiting for Santa to leave a custom GTX 1080 under your Christmas tree, it might actually be worth waiting and saving a few extra pennies up as you might be getting a real contender on the market come January. So, there you have it, lots of interesting information in this there video. There's a couple of links in the description below which I suggest you give a read if you are at all interested in seeing the various sources for this sort of thing. And again, thank you very much for watching. The 1080 tie looks pretty damn juicy, I must say. But of course, we should all wait for confirmation on, the, on everything we've discussed here before getting too hyped up about it. But thankfully, if the rumours are true, we don't have to wait too long before we see the reveal. Thank you very much for watching. As always, guys, I'll see you next time.